Did you know that there are a lot of connections between your pelvis and your voice? Now, this can make the difference between a powerful voice and a voice that just doesn't improve. So if you are interested in making your voice super powerful, the easy way, keep on watching until the end. My name is Angelina. I'm a vocal coach and I specialize on teaching people how to sing the functional and easy way. If you are interested in learning to sing the smart and functional way, subscribe to my channel right now. Also, I invite you to go to the description below because there you can find my warm-ups for Thai voices that you can download right now and they are free for you. Now, let's go to today's topic. Connection between pelvis and voice. Well, many, many connections, but I'm going to talk about three of them today. This is a topic that is super important for every singer because nowadays, I don't know many people that have a stable and strong pelvis that is functional for singing. Just because we sit on chairs too much, we are not as mobile as we should be. So that is something to consider. And as singers, it is important to take care of this and that way taking care of our voice. And so, yes, singing with good technique gives you a strong pelvic floor, which is beneficial for many other things. So the first connection I want to talk about is the connection between the pelvis and the breathing. You know, for singing, one of the main things you have to do from the beginning, at least in the way I choose to work with, is to start opening the breathing in your low back. So commonly people think it is in the belly, but that belly breathing that people uh, usually do by, by only expanding the belly that actually brings your ribs inwards and it's not good for singing. So first thing we want to expand our low back when we breathe in. And for that, we need a pelvis tilt. Usually we have the pelvis tilted either too much forward or too much backward. And that kind of blocks your low back. Of course, not everybody has this issue, but most people do. So if you work with the pelvis for singing in a way in which the pelvis is in a certain position and it has a certain movement when you breathe in, then that breathing, it's much more powerful for singing because it reaches your diaphragm in some specific parts of the diaphragm that will allow you to naturally and organically bring your larynx down without you pushing it. That is super important for singing. It can really make your progress really, really fast if you start getting used to that from the beginning voice, body, mind system is holistic whether you want it or not. So this is a theory of it. Of course, if you want to really learn how to get this low back breathing, join my functional singer program. There are plenty of classes there that explore that in depth. So you can go to the description below and you're going to find a link. But let's continue with point number two. The other connection I want to talk about between the pelvis and the voice, the torso tension or not tension. Well, in other words, the activity that your posture and muscles has to do depending on your pelvis position and specifically whether your pelvis is supporting your body weight or not. Most people tend to use the pelvis in a way in which the pelvis is not really as supportive as it could be. And the pelvis is a really good place to support your body weight. It's, it's a big place. And usually we kind of shift our body weight either back or forth and that sort of shifts our center of gravity and that makes that our back muscles and also the anterior muscles have to kind of overwork or underwork and that affects your breathing and your voice. You can go very in depth to understand all these connections, but the one thing that I think everybody has to understand is that for learning to sing is really about learning to do less work. In other words, to allow the right muscles to work rather than everything else. That is the main problem with singing. Most people tend to use many more muscles than they need. And that's when the voice is tight and you get tired and it's just much harder to sing in general. If you use the pelvis in a correct way for singing, your torso muscles can be there for the function of singing rather than being focused on keeping you upright. And this is something we don't really notice. Most people tend to kind of lean back into their heels with the low back all the time overworking uh, or too much forward. Either way, your anterior and posterior muscles of the torso are not working for the function of singing, are working for another function. And then singing, it's much harder, of course. Not to mention the back problems that you're going to have later on. All right, the third point I want to raise today is jaw tension, something else that a lot of singers and non-singers suffer from. In a lot of cases, that can be really released by using the pelvis in a functional way. 
for singing and for movement. I always put this example. Let's say you are standing up and for example, you tend to lean on your heels too much, which is super common. And because of that, your jaw has to lock because if you release it, you fall back. So you have to lock your jaw. Always remember that your brain cares more about you staying alive than about singing. And that's good because if you're dead, you can't sing. <laughs> Something to consider. Again, we come back to the same. If you allow your pelvis to support your body weight, then the jaw has the possibility to be soft. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen right away. If you have the tendency to always tense your jaw, and I know that a lot of people tend to tense the jaw in relaxed positions when they are sitting, even when they are sleeping sometimes. So um, the muscles have an imbalanced tone already. It's going to be much harder. But if you learn to use the pelvis correctly, the muscles have the right context to start giving way. And that is crucial for singing, not only for you to have the ability to use the opening of the mouth in your favor, but also because the holding of the jaw has a lot of repercussions in all the vocal system, repercussions that are indirect because you are working with the nervous system. You're holding your jaw. As far as your nervous system is concerned, you are in danger and your voice muscles are not going to be, oh, yes, let's sing. It's not the best time to sing when you are in danger. You try to sing in that way, you're going to be sending two opposite signals at the same time. Sing and don't sing. If you like this video, please physically like it with the button and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in learning to sing in this functional and holistic manner. Let me know in the comments if you want any other voice topic covered and I'll see you next video.